family here and it weighs a lot. Inside this box is the Cronings robot trolley. It's another robot to add to my growing robot family and this one is going to help me move my Hero Camper Ranger around my drive on sites and locations so that basically everything's a little bit easier. We're going to unbox it, show you how to install it and then show it to you in action on my drive. So let me put this down and we'll basically have a look what's inside and how it's all going to work. Let's roll the intro. This is it, it's the Cronings RT1500 robot trolley. I'm gonna put it down now because it's quite heavy and you'll see more of it in a moment in this video. But, oh, it weighs 22 kilograms, so it is heavy. I think I'm making some assumptions now that majority of it is ballast because obviously you want some good weight so it can get traction when it's down on the floor. But so obviously in that box, we have the robot trolley itself. Now there are various different versions and models of this available based on the amount of weight that you want to be able to pull. I put a link down in the description. Uh, you can grab one of these from Fun Fit Adventure, the same place that I bought my Hero Camper Ranger from. They're the UK dealer for Cronings. So again, this one is the RT1500. So it has the ability to tow or pull. Uh, a 1,500 kilogram camper or caravan or trailer or whatever it is that you want to pull. There's various different um, connection mechanisms that are available. I'll show you what comes with it, but you can get like a ball hitch and other things for it as well. Then there are two other versions. There's the 2,500 version, which obviously allows you to tow uh, 2,500 kilograms. There's also an RS version of that, so same pulling or towing capacity, but it has a bit more torque so it can pull things faster. We're going to the speeds of stuff in a moment. And then finally is the RT 4500, so 4500 kilograms. But that's, again, we'll see how things work in more detail. So in the box, you obviously get the, the robot itself. I like to name all of my robots. So I'm calling this one Johnny Five because it reminds me of uh, number five from Short Circuit, fantastic movie. So in addition to the robot itself, you get the controller for it. So again, we'll see how things work in a moment. You've got forwards, backwards, left and right. Inside there are two AA batteries. You have to unscrew the back to be able to get to them. So I'm assuming that the battery life is um, pretty good. The fact that there's no easy access panel, you'll unscrew it. There's a little indicator there for the battery as well. So we'll see how those things work um, when we get to it. In terms of the charging cable, there's a little um, jack point uh, on the robot that you obviously plug this into, and then you plug the power adapter into the wall to be able to charge it. It comes as standard with the European plug here, but you also get a little bag, and in there are various different adapters. So obviously I'm gonna want the UK adapter. You just basically plug the plug into the adapter and then into the wall socket. And then we also have this other one. I'm sure you know what that is, if it relates to your country or not. And this other one here. So for me here in the UK, again, I'm just gonna get the, the, the charging plug, plug it into the adapter and then plug it in. I do wish actually there was an option where this lower piece could be completely removed and you'd kind of slide in a different version just so it wasn't as wiggly, but not the end of the world and it's gonna do the job that we need it to do, but it's kind of handy, you get that little pouch that you can keep things in. We get um, the manual for the robot trolley. So it's in German, English, Dutch, and uh, Danish, I think. Or I can't remember what they all stand for, but um, basically it's not um, super complicated. In here is information about how you're charging, um, some of the parameters of how it works, um, the certificate of uh, conformity, and then kind of how to use it and install it on your camper caravan trailer or whatever it is. Obviously I'll show you some of that in this video. 
Then we get um, some different connections. So here we have the, the standard connector. This will fit into the top of the robot and then this slides into the mounting bracket. You can get different ones of these, as mentioned at the beginning, with like a ball hitch or something, if you want to be able to have more versatility. Also, this one is uh, quite a low profile one. You can get a, a larger one that you can adjust, um, you know, if you have a, a larger vehicle. But again, for my Hero Camper Ranger, this is going to be absolutely perfect. And again, that sits in the top um, of the robot, which we will show you when we get to that piece. And then that's held in place by these four little screw bolt things that just kind of keep it all in place but still enables it to maneuver around that uh, little adapter then fits in to this kind of mounting bracket which goes onto your trailer there's nice uh, rubberized bits as well so you're not going to mess up the metal and then obviously this connects onto the underside of your camper or trailer or what, whatever and then there's these additional two mounting brackets that apply pressure either side um, to where you're mounting it so that everything all fits together so the advantage of something like this as opposed to some of those other motor movers where you know once it's installed that's it adds a bit of additional weight to your trailer or whatever and obviously if you then come to sell it you've either got to go through the faff of taking it off or maybe sell it with it or whatever one of the benefits of this is obviously it's a bit more versatile and it you know you can transfer this easily between campers and trailers and caravans if you've got um multiple ones so in terms of cost i'm definitely not an expert on this um but this particular one is a is um 1250 pounds so they are expensive but if you compare it to the you know conventional motor movers the costs are very comparable and the reason i decided to get one my drive is relatively narrow so with the camper on it and cars and stuff it's really difficult to try and move things around i have to keep on moving the cars out of the way to make sure i don't smack into anything so this is why i decided sod it i'm going to buy another robot to, for my robot family and get this and i think it's, you know, it should last many 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 years and um, make basically moving things around a lot easier and obviously you can use it uh, at a campsite as well so moving it around on gravel and grass and everything should work really well so in terms of the performance of this unit itself before we go to do the install and show you in practice so again i'm only talking here about this particular one the rt 1500 so weighs 22 kilograms it has a maximum load capability of 300 kilograms in terms of you know what you can actually dollop on the top of it but they recommend somewhere between 75 to 90 kilograms i think it is in terms of ball weight so obviously similar to when you're attaching it to your towing vehicle so those are things to keep in mind obviously you want a reasonable weight on there to allow those caterpillar tracks to get traction and be able to move across um, so on standard tarmac and things it should be fine it's where you've got kind of wet or damp gravel and on the incline that the weight is really going to play even more of a part on there in terms of incline it can handle inclines and declines of up to 10 percent um, obviously it may need a little bit of a, a helping push to get started or whatever if it is a bit wet and slippery off the gravel is slipping underneath um, but apart from that it should be fine unladen so when you're not got it connected to anything which maybe you're just driving around your garden for fun it will move around nine meters per minute but when you're actually moving your trailer or caravan it's going to be seven um, meters per minute so not super fast but not super slow and really for me the main focus is that you can do those little intricate movements and you're not going to blast it into the wall um by accident or something like that when you're not using it um you can store it in this lovely bag that it comes with and um when you're not using it the uh power will automatically turn off after three minutes so you haven't got to worry too much about the battery running out and from a full charge to empty you're going to see around 30 minutes of usage which may not actually sound a lot but you don't need you know you're not going to be running this for minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes trying to move move stuff around literally park it move it do whatever and they're going to just easily plug it back in to charge so in this particular version there's a 5000 milliamp hour battery so it's a 14.85 volt uh, lithium battery so again, should last a long time. Obviously, being at lithium, it's okay for you to kind of utilize nearly all of that capacity so you can get it all the way down to it's nearly empty without worrying about um, ruining battery. 
as of all battery stuff, you don't want to leave it fully charged. So fully charge it again prior to you wanting to use it. Don't just leave it sat at 100%. Obviously the battery will degrade a bit over time. So if you're not using it regularly, you will want to kind of pop it onto charge every now and then to help cycle and maintain the battery. So I think that's pretty much it. Again, on the uh, trolley itself, there is a single port for the uh, charging and then a single on off button and um, that's that's pretty much it um, yeah let's move forward to installing the bracket on my hero camper ranger and then show you it moving around on the drive okay so as we get ourselves ready now for the install process you're going to need a few things so you can get those ready so you're going to need a phillips head screwdriver that's going to be for screwing in the mounting onto the robot trolley itself. Then for the mounting hardware that connects to your trailer or caravan or camper, whatever it is, you're gonna need a few things. So you're gonna need 13 mil spanner, a 16 mil spanner, and then for these next ones, again, you can either get another spanner or the socket sizes that I'm gonna go with. So you're gonna need a 13 mil socket, a 16 mil socket and a 17 mil socket. So a, a plethora of different sizes that have been used uh, for the mounting brackets for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we will uh, take this kind of bracket that goes onto the trolley. We'll install that first, that's pretty easy. Um, the, the steel material that this is made out of um, you will, your hands will get a little bit dirty. So if you want to, you can put some gloves on, but it will wash off easy enough. So I'll grab my knife. We'll chop open this bag and then show you basically just how easy it is to install this bracket onto the robot trolley itself. Okay, so I've moved everything else out of the way. Again, for this, just using the four screws, the flathead screwdriver and this right here so it's really super simple so in terms of what is forward on the robot trolley the obviously you can go forwards or backwards and do whatever you want but if you want to kind of have good orientation with what you're seeing on the controller where the power button here on the front is that is forwards so again depending on how you're going to mount it you pop this in here and basically you're going to have to twist it around and move it anyway, so it's not a problem, but this bracket has the holes in that you want to line up with the holes on here, and then you will kind of screw in to keep things in place. So, again, super simple. Grab these little threaded screws. You see they're not threaded all the way. And just basically we'll go around just do the one on the side here. And again, you can just hand tighten them whilst you line them all up. Again, we just tighten it up a little bit. And actually tightening it all the way still has it protruding enough so you can just tighten until you get tension with the screwdriver. And then you are done. So last screw right here. And that's it, all tightened up, but again, still good maneuverability. And again, we can lift it up if I had enough strength. But there we go. Um, now we can construct the mounting bracket for the frame of the trailer. Okay, so just have a little look at the instructions here. And I think, that we can probably put what they call the suspension bracket in place before actually going outside. And it looks like it might rain here. So we got off to a, a good start with that. So again, I'll just clarify to you all of the different parts that we're going to be using. So this one part here that has basically the slide plate where the actual 
uh, robot trolley connects to. So when you're coming to install this, this is where you'll need um, a 17 mil socket for the nylock nuts on here. Um, and I'm recommending a 16 mil um, spanner uh, for the top. So you can keep it in place with the spanner and then tighten it up with the, the 17 mil socket. So that's your, your 16 and 17 mil components just there. Then for, oh, this big, uh, I guess this is the like adjustable sliding rod piece that will go across um, the bar. Again, that is 16 mil. So again, you can either use a spanner or a socket on that. And then finally, for this other part that clamps onto the, I guess the uh, other side of your trailer, both the tops and the bottoms of these are 13 mil. So 13 mil socket you can apply on the top or the bottom to those nylock or the nylon uh, locking nuts. Again, I will use the 13 mil on the bottom to ease uh, doing it up and put the 13 mil spanner on top to keep things all in place. So that's how we're going to use all the tools and now simply a matter of constructing things. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the outer mounting tube. This is the, the thicker one that has the metal bar inside. So we just want to release the obviously nut a little bit to make this move freely. So you can see how that's working just there. And then from here, we're gonna connect the, uh, my brain's not working now, <laughs> the inner piece, which again, will just slide just into here. Again, so you can see it's slightly tapered so that this fits in. It'd be much easier if I was doing this not over a nice table. But again, we can push that home nice and firmly and obviously when we get some tension on either side, that should do the job. And then we're gonna just mount the mounting bracket into the lower part of the um, outer mounting tube. Okay, so now we're outside and we're gonna start the actual install. In terms of positioning, you can see here, it recommends that it's basically at the front kind of point of the the caravan piece so we're going to install it just behind um, the box here so it's in line with the front of the hero ranger but obviously behind the toolbox so there should be a good weight uh, below under here so things we need to keep in mind when we're installing it is unfortunately human evolution has not given us four arms and eyeballs on the end of our fingers so we need to take our time in trying to position everything whilst we're laying underneath there and also there is the brake bar that runs obviously from the front here all the way down to the, the rear axle for the braking. So we need to make sure that we're not obstructing that and that obviously the brakes are still gonna work and there's not gonna be any rubbing. Okay, so let's get on with the actual installation itself. So here on the Hero Camper Ranger, we don't actually need to use that extension bar that kind of goes in the middle that we looked at when we're upstairs, sat at the desk. So we can take that out completely, just leave that on the floor and just put the basically the two connection rods together, squeeze them all the way in to make it as short as possible. And then basically you just need to angle it up and over that um, brake bar that goes across the two. Then we can extend it across the A-frame uh, as you can see here. So make sure that the as you're, as you're laying under it, the side that the robot's in a clamp on, on my setup here is on the right hand side. That kind of sits in on the groove and um, sits nice and flush. And then you can just kind of adjust the, um, the other side to sit in there and it's gonna clamp on. Obviously the thing that I forgot to mention obviously before doing this is take those bolts and nuts out so that you can access the clamps so it won't sit properly, but hopefully that's uh, pretty straightforward. Once you've got all that um, in there and adjusted, just pull it nice and tight and then slowly add those clamps and the bolts on. This is where you want your 
extra arms and fingers on the end fingers <laughs> eyes on the end of your fingers um, but again it's relatively straightforward just a little bit fiddly get that all done and make things are nice and tight so again those those brackets are going to hold things taut and just finish off by doing up that bolt in the middle um, to stop any chance of those two bars kind of sliding in on each other which I'm pretty sure they won't but just make sure it's uh, not going to move anywhere okay so now it's all installed and finished so we have access to the bracket just under here so we're going to get the robot move the car out of the way and then uh, we'll have a go see how easy it is to move on my incline here I have just done another nose weight test there was no change in weight uh, on my setup but since I added that bar so that, that's good I was a little bit worried obviously it is a little bit heavier so it would alter um, the nose weight but no impact for me on my towing capabilities on having this connected so I think that's it um, I am going to check what degree of slope I have it feels minimal so it should be nowhere near the 10 percent um so my main concern is that when i connect this up and turn the brake off it doesn't roll down into the garage there but we shall see okay so now it's all done we just need to slide in the trolley obviously onto the camper itself so make sure that your jockey wheel is extended enough that you've got enough room to be able to slide it in and then basically using your extra strong muscles just slide the uh, camper trolley or the robot trolley onto your camper or your trailer or whatever it is. So it's just kind of resting there. Put the pin in and secure it and then uh, we're ready to give it a go. Okay, so trolley is attached. Just need to lower the jockey wheel down now. So the tracks are firmly down. It's so already now I can feel that the weight is off of the jockey wheel. So again we're put this all the way up. And also remember for me is to how my brain likes to work. I made sure that the power button is facing outwards so that it's gonna forward it will be forward. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave things like that. Now I'm going to brace myself and hope that when I release the brake, the traction on the robot trolley is uh, going to not make my Hero Camper disappear into the garage. So I should get ready. Okay. Brakes are off. Ready now. Will you touch the on button? Okay, it's now on. You can press the up button once on the controller to turn things on. Don't know if you can see that's now turned green. I press forward. It works. So now obviously we can just position it, move it forwards, backwards. And it actually seems to be doing a good job on my drive. So I'm going to move the camera angle now so you can see things move around better, move the cars, and then show you I'm going to move it from one side of the drive over to the other. Okay, so the goal is going to be to get it from this side to this side, and also about the camera blowing over. So uh, let's get things going.
Okay, so time for final thoughts. So I'm actually really impressed with it. I think it moved the camera from one side of my drive to the other with relative ease. I think I probably could have done it a little bit faster once I get kind of better at using the controls. But I still think it was actually pretty fast. Definitely faster than I could do it if I was hitching it to the car and everything because I'm not very good at maneuvering it um, with the car. But uh, definitely less uh, hassle on my arms, trying to lug things up and down and pull it and push it and pull it and everything. Any couple of things I noticed was um, my drive is a two degree incline, so well within the thresholds of the 10 degree that this can handle. When it came to stopping, there is a, obviously a little bit of rollback, I guess in terms of when the motor is disengaging and then locking into position. So as you factor that in mind, don't go too close to a wall or a garage door or something, because I guess it will still move slightly when you take your finger off the button. So that's something to keep in mind. And then when I put the brake on, I guess because there is some element of resistance because um, the trolley is on there, when you then raise it up and the trolley lifts off the ground and the, again the traction of the, and the weight of the trolley gets lifted, then the brake went on fully. So what I did, or what I've found to do, and I'm going to keep on doing, excuse my chair, it makes a noise, is as I um, lower the, um, the jockey wheel, keeping my hand pushing forwards on that brake so it makes sure it engages and nothing rolls anywhere. The only other thing that uh, I wasn't expecting, but again, it's just a matter of getting used to. I assumed because it is that kind of tank type setup that when I pressed left or right, it would move left or right in situ, but it doesn't do that. You have to be going forwards or backwards, then pressing left or right to get it to move. And obviously, even though, uh, obviously in my head, the forwards and backwards bit worked, you just gotta keep an eye on the, uh, the left and right piece when you're kind of going forwards and backwards it doesn't that's trying hard to explain it's not you need to make sure if you're pressing it at the same time then it doesn't go forwards or backwards it does turn on the spot but you have to be pressing uh, both the buttons to get it to do its thing but yeah i think it's good i hope it's going to last uh, a really long time and make things a lot more effortless even just moving the camper forward so i can get something out of the garage or or what have you when you've got up and over doors and stuff like i have but uh, yeah, it's another robot to add to the robot family. Oh, and as always, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, take care of yourself. Please consider liking and subscribing this video. It'd be much appreciated. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.